The first region is the proximal area that articulates with the acetabulum to form the hip joint. Generally, it consists of four parts, head and neck and two bony processes, the greater and the lesser trochanters. Let's study these landmarks in detail. This is the head that majorly gains the attention as it is the point where the bones form the hip joint with a fusion of three bones generally known as innominate bone. Like this. It is covered with articular cartilage and appears to be smooth because of it. As we move ahead, neck is the region that is connecting the head of femur with the shaft of the femur. It is cylindrical, round and is projecting in a superior and medial direction. A wide range of motion at the hip joint is being achieved as it is set at an angle of approximately 135 degrees to the shaft. Due to this specific angle, we are able to move the hip joint. By clearly observing the anterior aspect and just lateral to the neck, a palpable projection of the bone emerges. This is the greater trochanter. Lesser trochanter, as the name already shows that it is smaller than the greater trochanter, projecting from the posterior medial side of the femur, just inferior to the neck shaft junction. Besides having the four areas of the proximal femur, there are also two pony ridges connecting the two trochanters. Intertrochanteric line, it is the line or a ridge of the bone running in an inferior medial direction on the anterior surface of the femur. It extends between the two trochanters. It is also known as pectineal line after it passes the lesser trochanter on the posterior surface to which the pectineus muscle attaches. Intertrochanteric crest is located posteriorly on the femur surface. This is a ridge that is connecting the two trochanters. Here is an end to the proximal portion of the femur.